Do you remember those nightmares from when you were a kid? No more than seven, eight, maybe more? The ones that would jolt you awake, sweating in your sheets. I do. Mine was where I was this investigator, investigating this case where a girl had gone missing. I tracked it down to a family basement, where I discovered a doll that looked exactly like her, inside a coffin, where she was stuffed inside, dead. Then I was locked in the basement in the dark, left to face the doll alone, and the doll would always rise up, the corpse within it cracking and making these moist, fleshy sounds. I would always wake up after that. But I'm not here to talk about her. No, I'm here to talk about someone... something far worse and stranger. I'm here to talk about a woman who lives lived across the street. A woman who now is haunting my life. I first met her a few years ago. I had recently moved into the house, which I shared with some roommates, and I'd only been on the street having a walk when she approached me. You're the new girl, she said, tapping me on the shoulder. Uh, yeah, I replied. Tiffany Hydrangea just moved. I turned and pointed at the house, right over there. I'm Janice. Janice Commonwealth, she introduced. She was a typical old grandma-esque person, with a flower-patterned dress and flowing white hair. I live in the cottage around the bend, near the lake. Come visit sometime. I'll bake you cookies or something. Think of it as a... Welcome to the neighborhood gift. Thank you, I replied. But you don't have to. I'm sure I can... No, no, I insist. And so, next week I went over and was treated to some of the best cookies I'd ever tasted. They were soft, sweet like honey, and were studded in a nut I've never been able to really find. And then I came over another week, then another, and another. Very soon, it was more part of my schedule. I'd go over every other week, talk about my life, where I'd worked for a company that had something to do with old relics, and she told me about new ideas for her cookies. And then, she vanished. A month ago, she disappeared. I went over as usual, and nobody answered the door, even after I'd knocked five or so times. Usually, she'd be quick to answer, or she'd yell something. Miss Commonwealth? I yelled. No answer. I feared for the worst. I tried the door handle. It shook open, turning, and I pushed it, opening the door. It was odd. She'd never had the door unlocked, ever, even when I was visiting. The first thing I noticed was the scent of tea and cookies. That, at least, was normal, but not anything else. Hello? I asked, searching. Miss Commonwealth? All I got was silence. I went over to the kitchen. Perhaps she'd been caught up in baking or something, but still. Nothing. The kitchen was empty, void, except for cakes of tea laid out on the dining room table, and still baking cookies in the oven. It was as if she'd vanished, just as she was about to answer the door. But then, why had the door been unlocked? I continued my search, all over the house, but still, I didn't find her. Suddenly, just as I reached her bedroom, I heard something. A rustle of leaves outside, and I turned, fast as lightning, towards the window. I saw a blur, like an animal moving rapidly, but it didn't look like any animal I'd known. I called the police after that, and I waited for them to arrive. That's when I got the phone call. It was Mrs. Commonwealth, except for some reason my phone displayed her as an unknown caller. That had never happened before. The profile picture was the same, but still, the name itself was Unknown Caller. Mrs. Commonwealth, I answered. Where are you? Silence. I asked again. Silence. I began to ask again, but before I could, I heard her deep breathing, panting, as if she was being hunted. Hello? I'm lost. I don't know where I am. Can you find me? Mrs. Commonwealth, can you describe where you are? I panicked. The... 
Static poured in. And I yelped, pushing the phone away from my ear. Walls are so bright. My god, it's coming. The walls, it's like clay. I... Static over again poured into my ears, and then... Silence. Hello? I insisted. Mrs. Commonwealth? Then there was the breathing. Her breathing, but it was like she was far away, too far away. And it was as if her voice had been copied a hundred times over, then played back. The breathing got louder, 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 until... We're sorry, but this number isn't available. A monotonic, computered voice rang out. I looked at the screen. It was showing an error message telling me that the number didn't exist. What the heck? I murmured, tapping several buttons, then calling the number again. It rang, but nobody picked up. I tried again and again, right up until the police finally arrived. I told them everything. She'd vanished, as if she was about to welcome me in, but then disappeared. I told them about the phone call, and they said they'd look into it. In the end, I think they decided she'd gotten lost somewhere somehow, and told me that she'd probably be back. She didn't come back. I waited hours until the sun set and the moon rose, yet... Nothing. I thought about calling the police, and then... And then decided against it. Maybe, I had thought... They were right after all. Maybe she'd come back later. So I returned back to my house, ignored my roommate's questions about where I'd been all day, and willed myself to sleep. Then I woke up. Two in the morning, my phone was ringing, blasting this tune I hadn't heard in years. It was old, and one I vaguely recognized to be from some obscure 80s artist. I rubbed my eyes, then checked in onto my phone. Unknown number, I murmured, just before my eyes focused and saw the profile picture. This is Commonwealth. What the heck? I tapped the answer button, and I was greeted by heavy breathing. It was farther away than last time. It seemed thicker somehow, as if it had been processed through a filter, yet it seemed real still and organic. Mrs. Commonwealth? Hello? I'm sorry, I don't know where I am. Can you find me? The heck? That's what she said before. No, not just what she said before, but exactly what she said before. The inflection, the voice, everything was exactly the same. Was I too confused to answer? And before I could even think of one, she said it again. Hello? I'm sorry. I don't know where I am. Can you find me? Can you tell me what it looks like? I managed to stutter. I'm going to call the police. Hello? I'm lost. I don't know where I am. Can you find me? The voice repeated. Where are you? I pressed. No answer. Hello? Silence. And then suddenly, I'm outside. Can you let me in? But but it was it was wrong. It just wasn't right. It it was like that monotonal voice dictating the error. It was computerized, processed, inorganic. Can you let me in? What do you mean? I continued. I don't... We're sorry. But the number... I swore. Throwing the phone across the room, crashing into the window, where it bounced off, landing on my bed. Wait, the window. There was someone outside in the cul-de-sac it viewed over. Someone was trailing long white hair in a flower-decorated dress. That's... I gasped. Impossible. It was Mrs. Commonwealth standing, looking away from the house, facing a tree. Her face but inches away from it. Something something wasn't right about how she looked, though. I went up to the glass to see closer, and suddenly I realized... The flowers on her dress were wrong. I, I distinctly remember her saying how she'd always wished she could have tulips on a dress, and how she could never find any, and this... This woman outside my house had tulips on her dress. But apart from that, she looked almost the same. Suddenly I heard a noise coming from the palms of my hands. The phone had somehow turned on. It was nothing on it but a photo of this hallway, and no matter, no matter what I did, it stayed the same. And then came the voice. Can you let me in? It was the exact same as before. Across the street in the cul-de-sac, Mrs. Commonwealth, or whatever was outside, 
moved its jaw up and down as if it were speaking. It's so cold out here. The rooms, they were so cold too. Cold as clay. The woman outside continued speaking. The voice emanating from my phone. Please let me in. You're not her. Who are you? What's going on? Hello? I'm lost. I don't know where I am. Can you find me? And then the woman outside began to turn around, and before I could see her face, I... I fainted. I don't know what happened in the hours after that, but the next thing I knew, my roommates were around me, shaking me awake. Uh, what? What? Dude, what happened? Said a voice behind me. Huh? I asked, confused. Magnus, what do you mean? Dude, look around you! And I did. What the heck? I was at the dining table. There was a box of cereal in front of me, and there was a bowl filled with milk. No, not milk. Instead, there was a creamy substance. I poked at it with a spoon and found it to be... chunky. I suddenly realized what it was. Clay? What the heck? What happened? I demanded, looking back up at my roommates. We found you like this? One of them said. I woke up and I heard a noise in the kitchen, like someone was looking for something. I went out, I found you, except you didn't act like... you. I tried to ask you what you were doing, but you didn't explain. Then you got clay from the arts and crafts bucket, and you started mixing it with milk. You poured it in, and then I tried to stop you. I... I, I, I don't... remember. I looked around the kitchen. Sure enough, it looked like someone had been there. What happened next? You were able to push me off, so I went to get the others to help. When I got back, you had a bowl filled with... Clay and milk. You're about to pour cereal into it, so we stopped you. I, I don't... I don't understand, I stammered. What about outside? Did you, did you see her? Mrs. Commonwealth. What are you talking about? The man known as Stephen questioned. I didn't see anything. I got up, I looked around, then retrieved my phone from Andrea, who had it in her hands. I checked the CCTV app. It should view here, around here. What are you doing? I ignored Andrea. The camera didn't show anything. No, no strange woman? Nothing. This didn't make sense. I checked the call app. No calls were made. Not even a scam call. But to my further confusion, the internal camera caught me causing a mess in the kitchen and making the food. I don't, I don't understand. I muttered. We don't either, Andrea said. Let's go to a doctor. We drove to the hospital, and within minutes, a doctor was checking me out. They scanned me, poked and prodded, but couldn't come up with a better reason than I was sleepwalking. Weirdly, my friends seemed to agree I was sleepwalking. However, the doctor decided I should stay in one of the hospital rooms for the rest of the night, and so I complied. Well, I tried. The doctors were taking me to the observation room when I caught sight of something out of the corner of my eye. No. Someone. Someone wearing a flower-covered dress, and... I broke free of the doctor's grip and ran over to them. They looked back, revealing the face of Mrs. Commonwealth, and I ran after them. The doctors behind me chased me, but I was faster, and somehow the old lady, or, or whatever it was was faster, and suddenly it was as if they were in another place, a hallway, alone. The lights were bright, the walls clear white and manila. I felt a sinking feeling, then looked down to see... clay. The floor was made of wet clay, clay that I was now sinking into. Hello? Mrs. Commonwealth? Hello? I'm lost. I don't know where I am. Can you find me? A voice behind me asked. I turned around to see. No. No, it wasn't Mrs. Commonwealth. It was... It was something else. I had turned around to see me. 
my face on the body of Mrs. Commonwealth. It mirrored my face. Every look, every blink, every gasp. Everything here is as cold as clay. The thing stepped closer, and I stepped back, feeling myself sink into the ground as I stepped. I stumbled, and I fell to the ground. Next thing I knew, I was inside the hospital, the normal one, and the doctors were all around me. Apparently, I, I tried to run, and I suddenly fainted. And so I agreed to be monitored for a week. And for a week, nothing happened. I mulled around, being observed by doctors, no sleepwalking, no illness, no creepy disease. So I was dismissed. Some sort of momentary hysteria, they called it. Nothing to worry about. And for the next month, nothing else happened. The police filed a formal investigation into the whereabouts of Mrs. Janice Commonwealth, but they weren't able to locate her. Nobody was looking for her anyway. I guess that's the price to pay when you're old. This also meant the police gave up after a week or so and just claimed that she probably decided to vanish on her own. After all, disappearing isn't a crime. It all got worse, though. I thought I was fine. I wasn't. She appeared again outside the house facing it. She spoke the same words again, just as my phone buzzed to life, the voice projecting all the way into it. I stayed up that entire night watching her stare up at me from across the street, drilling holes into my soul. When the sun set, I felt the urge to sleep. And before I knew it, I was asleep. She wasn't there when I woke up. Then the second night, I couldn't find her. Not at first, it was... It was only after I noticed something odd. She wasn't near the tree. She was closer this time. Just to the end of the sidewalk, meters away from the door. Again, like before, she didn't move. She just stared directly at me until the sun rose. And I slept. And now, yesterday... Yesterday, she's inside the house. Outside my door. I didn't see her outside. I didn't even consider that she was inside the house until I heard it. Hello? I'm lost. I don't know where I am. Can you find me? I'm not sure what'll happen if she gets in. I'm not sure what happened to her. All I know is that I want it to stop. So if you know anything about what could have happened to Mrs. Commonwealth, I need to know. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and... It's the end of today's video, or today's episode of the podcast, which means I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for hitting like, and subscribe, and bell, and I think it's still subscribe on podcasts. One day I'll look that up. If you guys are listening on your phone, like I think the statistics say like 90% of you are, then on your phone you can also listen on another place. It's an app called Chilling. The Chilling app allows you to listen to stories from me, that you can't get here, as well as stories from a whole group of other narrators. A lot of them you've heard before, some of them you've even heard here, like Autumn Ivy. Plus, it allows you to control the background music and background ambiance, which I think is probably one of the coolest features on there. Check out Chilling on Android and iOS now. I wanna give a very big thank you to everybody on Patreon, especially Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Brian Arce, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Robert Shonkwiller, USMC, Matt Bach, Jables Raz, Mask Note, Joshua Mullen, Dan Pham, Matthew McNeese, Ben Spates, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Fikamal, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Isodo Hatred, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Suzaku, at Grizzly Olsen Pro, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Jay, Miss Alexandra, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Willis, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Like I said, I, I cannot thank you guys enough for being a part of this, and that goes to everybody down there in the description, and everybody who even can just support for one dollar. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and sweet dreams. <laughs>